So it is uh, Thursday afternoon uh, before the Pro Tour. Uh, this is Pro Tour Fate Reforged in Washington, D.C. Uh, I have been in D.C. for a few days. I was in San Jose over the weekend uh, prior for the Grand Prix and actually went to San Jose to start uh, testing the Wednesday before that. So uh, I've been playing uh, and pre preparing for this tournament for you know, about a week now, uh, which is more than the preparation that I've gotten for the past few tournaments, and uh, despite that, I'm not, you know, not necessarily super thrilled with, uh, you know, things going into the tournament. Uh, Modern is not a format that I'm a huge fan of in general. Uh, it's just a, it's a very wide open format, which in some ways is a cool thing, but in other ways it's, it's frustrating uh, to prepare for as a professional level event, because, you know, there's so many different things you need to try to prepare for that it can make it difficult to actually make, you know, sort of deck decisions. Uh, one of the most frustrating things about the, the format is um, how powerful a lot of the linear decks are, things like Affinity and Storm, um, Splinter Twin, and, you know, the, the amount that you need to try and prepare for these decks that, uh, in many cases, you know, are so powerful unless you have very specific sideboard answers and you, need, you know, you only get 15 cards in your sideboard, so you need to play a deck that somehow is able to, you know, combat those decks, you know, while only having access to so many possible cards. So, the Magic Online results, and just the general results of events like the SCG uh, Modern Super IQs, um, have generally pointed toward it being likely with the banning of Treasure Cruise and Dig Through Time and, and Birthing Pod, uh, that Junk will be the most popular deck, you know, that Abzan. People call it Junk in, in Modern because, well, it's been Junk for forever, but Abzan, I guess, is what the, the coverage is going to call it this weekend. And, uh, you know, I think that it's it's possible that that deck makes up even, like, almost, eh, not probably not a third of the field, but maybe over, over a quarter of the field. I think that it's the kind of deck that a lot of people like to play, uh, and it's also, you know, just a, a, a deck that there's lots of, of blueprints for. You can find sort of successful builds for base black-green decks, you know, they've, they've been successful in Modern for a while. There is a new powerful card in Siege Rhino. Um, so I think that there's, it's very likely that's the most popular deck. So that's a deck that I wanted to play, a deck that was at least strong against. You know, that was a deck that I didn't feel like I wanted to uh, come in with a bad matchup against. Um, I actually think Burn is likely to be another popular deck. Um, it's done very well in Magic Online. Often Burn is overrepresented on Magic Online simply because it's uh, an inexpensive deck. But I actually think Burn is pretty well positioned now. Uh, Monastery Swift Spear gives the deck uh, a lot of uh, additional power because previously, you know, the deck basically needed to, you know, play seven burn spells that dealt three damage or six if your opponent played a Shockland, basically. Um, and, you know, that's, in many cases, you know, re relatively easy, but if your opponent puts up some sort of resistance, has any kind of life gain, it can be very difficult, uh, at least before you, you yourself die. Uh, but Monastery Swift Spear basically gives the deck a second Goblin Guide, which means that you have ways to get in additional damage uh, and, you know, you don't necessarily need to draw quite as many of the, uh, of the three damage burn spells. So I think that's, a, that's another deck that, uh, you know, sort of I kept in mind during my preparation, and I think will be relatively popular at the tournament. Uh, and after that, there's, you know, many of the other sort of linear decks. I think there'll be, you know, Blight Right Control and various smatterings of combo decks. So coming in thinking that, you know, okay, well, the, the decks that I, I think I mostly want to beat are you know, uh, various forms of, of Abzan, various forms of green-black, uh, as well as sort of burn and then various blue control decks. I actually thought back to uh, the deck that I played uh, at Grand Prix Chicago during the, the, the uh, modern season about two years ago uh, when Jund was the most popular deck. Um, and it was the, the green-white Wiltleaf Liege deck. Uh, that I had built specifically to combat a field of, you know, various thought seizes and inquisitions and, you know, that sort of garbage. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, that was that was the deck that I wanted to work on the most when I uh, came to testing last week. And interestingly, I found that uh, Sam Party and Josh McLean uh, and John Stern had, were all sort of on it independently had been on a, a, a similar path. You know, they came from uh, they came from it as you know, oh well, you know, the core of Birthing Pod just as a creature deck was was still kind of powerful even without Birthing Pod. And they wanted to try and you know find a way to, to build basically Podless Pod, and I was like, oh well, I want to I want to rebuild this you know this anti fair deck deck that I played, uh, you know, way back when. And that version of that deck that I played before was basically just you know 
cards that let you win fair matchups. Like, it had uh, uh, Smiter and Lingering Souls and Gavany Township mana creatures, and then just hate cards. You know, it had various uh, various hate bear style cards, as well as, you know, just like stuff like Stony Sounds, Rule of Law, etc., sideboard cards, because that's the best way to beat most of these linear decks. Um, and, you know, we, we sort of found that we were in the same general spot, which is, which is nice for me, because lots of times preparing for tournaments, I'm the only person who wants to build the kind of decks that I do. Um, so having other people to bounce ideas off of well, with, was uh, really nice this time. Uh, this is the first event that I actually worked with these, these players. Uh, face-to-face joined up with the uh, CFB Prime group that I typically test with for this event. Uh, and so far, I think our testing has gone has gone quite well. I mean, no one is is thrilled with some sort of broken deck or anything like that. But everyone, I think, worked well together, uh, and I think has sort of come to find decks that they at least you know are reasonably happy with. Um, so that's what I'm playing. I'm playing a Wiltleaf Leech deck. That was actually the card that that uh, that they hadn't thought of that I sort of you know added to the conversation. They wanted to build you know basically the podless pod value deck. And I was like, well, how about this guy? This guy allows your value deck to just kill people in two attacks. And uh, we, we, we messed around with a variety of different uh, different stuff in the deck, like we had Restoration Angel for a while. Um, Siege Rhino is actually quite good in the deck. Siege Rhino gives, the, gives you the ability to close games out that you didn't really have before, necessarily. Also works quite well with Wiltleaf Leech, because it becomes a giant trampling creature. Uh, but basically, the goal here is to be the sort of best fair deck you can. Uh, you are You're able to beat the other... You know, the, the Liliana decks, because Liliana is horrible against you because you have Lingering Souls and Smiters and Lieges. Um, you're good against, you know, the, the Zoo decks because you have, you know, Kitchen Finks and, and uh, Siege Rhino and, you know, a bunch of basic lands that, that, you know, you don't take damage. Actually, this, this deck is one of the few decks that I'm actually pretty happy to play uh, against with Burn. Because, you know, again, you have a lot of ways to prevent yourself from taking damage from your, your mana base. Uh, and then actual life gain effects that are that are and and a reasonable clock. So all of that together gives you, I think, a good matchup against Burn. So anyway, I'm I'm pretty happy with the deck. Um, the the big question is just you know okay, well what does our sideboard look like? Who are we hating up? Um, and that's still sort of in flux. You know, I definitely want to have uh, fracturing gusts against Affinity and Boggles, Stony Sounds against Affinity and Tron. Tron's a matchup that's mostly I, I'm mostly kind of ignoring. One of the nice things about being uh, green white black is you actually get access to thought seeds, which is a good catch-all for a lot of the combo decks. Um, but generally, I mean, overall, the sort of structure of the deck is that you know you you are you know semi disruptive. You have you know path and a couple of thought seeds in the main deck. Uh, Voice of Resurgence is a really good card against a lot of both the um, Liliana style decks as well as removal and counter magic based decks. Um, Pride Mage is, you know, a reasonable card in a lot of matchups. Uh, not not an all-star in most places, but it's kind of a workhorse. Exalted's is always good. I think this is one of the most consistently underrated cards in Magic. People are always like, oh, it doesn't really do that much. And then the combination of the abilities, I think, is actually quite effective in a lot of places. Um, Lingering Souls is a huge part of the reason that I think this deck is good. Um, Lingering Souls, I think, is the best fair thing to be doing. You know, fair meaning that you're, you're, you know, playing a normal game of Magic. You know, you're not, like, trying to win through some combo. You're not trying to win through, you know, just avoiding the basic axis of interaction. Um, that you're, you know, basically winning with the damage and creatures and whatever. Um, and Lingering Souls is, you know, the best sort of attrition-style card. And combine that with Wiltleaf Legion Gavany Township, and you have, you know, the ability to actually sort of put people on a serious clock, uh, as well as pressure their removal. So, anyway, this is the deck that I'm going to be playing in the Pro Tour. Um, I've done more drafts for this than for the last couple Pro Tours, I think, uh, and I feel pretty comfortable in the draft format. Um, I didn't play a ton of cons only limited, because I actually didn't prepare a ton for the last Pro Tour, um, which was reflected in my results. Uh, but, you know, I, I've played probably a dozen or so drafts in the past week. I'm uh, going to be doing more after I finish this right now. Um, so I feel like I'm, you know, in a pretty good spot there. So, you know, I'm hoping that the, uh, the Pro Tour ends up being more sort of fair style decks and less people trying to, you know, uh, trying to play Amulet of Vigor or Scape Shift or whatever. Those are pretty bad matchups for my deck. Um, they're winnable, but they're, they're very tough. Um, and, you know, hopefully the, the, the correct bullets come up when I do play the matchups where I need them. Um, cause that's really, you know, that's really what Modern in many ways is about is, you know, getting the sort of cyborg cards to line up with your opponent, because the cyborg cards are so powerful in so many of the matchups. Um, and that's why I think sideboarding is actually probably the most important thing. Um, it's probably more important in modern than it is anywhere else, just because the cyborg cards are so powerful compared to other formats. Um, 
but yeah, I, you know, we actually have a whole spreadsheet of our various sideboarding plans against different decks, and we're, we're working that out. Um, like I said, it's been great to work with uh, other people who sort of have a similar mindset to me and actually want to build the same kind of decks sometimes that I do. So, uh, But anyway, um, I'm, I'm feeling good. I am feeling hopeful. I like my deck. I like my... Uh, like my draft preparation, I feel I feel like this could be a good pro tour for me. So uh, hopefully it goes well, and I will check back in uh, tomorrow. All right, so it is Friday night uh, after day one of the pro tour, and uh, I finished the day five and three, which is you know a fine record. I made day two, which is you know certainly better than the alternative. Um, it's not a record I'm excited about. You know, uh, it's yeah you know, I need to go undefeated tomorrow in order to make top eight, which is you know obviously a tough proposition. Um, given that I started three and three, I was well, three and three at one point. Uh, you know, I'm certainly happy to be five and three. But uh, if you told me that I'd be five and three, you know, at the start of the day, it's not something I'd be, you know, I'd be stoked about because, you know, I obviously, you know, want to come here and do as well as possible. And that's, you know, there's many records better. It's actually three records better. <laughs> but uh, I feel like, uh, you know, the day went, you know, went all right. Like I had a, I had a decent but not amazing draft deck, and I went two and one. Um, I, I feel like that I could have gone three and zero. Oh. Uh, but you know, two and one, I wasn't I wasn't disappointed with it. It was you know it, within the range of expectation. It wasn't like it was some crazy deck that I expected to go three zero with, and I didn't. Um, in uh, in constructed, like I uh, said in the uh, first log, uh, I played the Whitley Fleech deck, and the reason I played the deck was because you know I, I thought it was an excellent choice in a, in a meta game that I felt would be heavy with uh, Abzan and Burn, uh, as well as you know a smattering of other styles of decks. Um, and it turns out, like, it, it seems that Abzan is by far the most popular deck, which is great for me, because uh, I think that my matchup in, in that, uh, you know, if that matchup is very, very good. Um, and it looks like Burn might actually be the second most popular deck, which is, you know, a big part of the reason I chose to play this particular version of, uh, of Abzan, of, you know, Green, White, Splash, Black, rather than playing some of the, you know, more traditional Jundish-style decks with, you know, Thoughtseize, Liliana, uh, just because... You know, my deck is more aggressive, it's able to put on pressure to put burn in a clock, and also just does less damage to itself, because it doesn't have as many, uh, many pain lands, has an easier mana base, gets to play stuff like Razor Verge Thicket, um, so I can actually cast my spells without killing myself. And, uh, I did play against one Abzan deck and one Burn deck, and I beat both of them, um, so scoreboard there. <laughs> um, but I also played against one Scape Shift deck and one Tron deck, uh, which if you asked me, you know, what are the matchups you least want to play, those would be, you know, probably at the top. Um, and maybe Storm's in there, but I at least have some sort of hate against Storm, but, uh, Tron's, Tron is a deck that can always, you can always beat, because their deck has a certain fail rate, um, and, you know, you're also just a deck with a bunch of, a bunch of big threats and, uh, disruption, you know, with Path actually deals with one of their big threats, and, uh, Thoughtseize can deal with the other, and I actually managed to beat the Tron deck that I played, uh, in exactly that fashion, I just played big dudes, uh, and my opponent, you know, played Worm Coils that I Pathed, and I, I Thoughtseized his Karn, I actually fought through multiple Oblivion Stones in the second game. He actually had turn four Tron in both games, and I won. So maybe the Tron matchup isn't as bad as I thought. I actually didn't test it at all because I expected it to be, you know, very much a fringe deck, and you can't, you know, you only have so much time. So you can only, you know, test so much against, you know, the different decks in the in the field. Um, I did lose to the Scape Shift deck, unsurprisingly. Uh, I actually, <laughs> game two was kind of funny. I actually had him on a, like, three-turn clock. I had... Uh, Pride Mage into Whitley Fleege, Whitley Fleege. I played the Pride Mage, and I thought seized him. Um, I took his Lightning Bolt, and his hand was like, Lightning Bolt, search for tomorrow, and nothing, just lands. Um, and he drew and immediately Snapcaster, Lightning Bolted my guy, and then drew and scape shifted and killed me. So, you know, thought seize uh, doesn't really protect you from the top of your opponent's deck, which is the problem with it. Um, but, you know, Thoughtseize doesn't need to do that, because then it would be even more absurd than it is. So, you know, while, while I felt like I got unlucky in that game, I don't feel like I am a favorite to win that match regardless. So I certainly, you know, certainly don't, uh, don't feel bad about that. And then I lost to a Splinter Twin deck, um, which was a little bit frustrating. I won the first game, uh, the second game went really long, and I, like, narrowly, narrowly lost, uh, after, you know, all of my, my threats lined up poorly against his answers. You know, he drew a bunch of remands, and I never drew smiters. Um, he was able to electrolyze a bunch of Lingering Souls tokens. My my mana was a little bit awkward. I had, like, multiple townships, so I could never cast two Whitley Fleeges. Um, so, it, and I had my basic swamp, too. So it was, you know, it was a, a little frustrating match, especially in ga considering in game three, uh, he had Keranos in play before I had a third mana source. Um, so whatever, it happens. But anyway, um, five and three is a reasonable spot, and uh, hoping to do well tomorrow, hoping to run the tables and make top eight. So we'll see how it goes. 
All right, so it is, what, Saturday night uh, after day two of the Pro Tour, and uh, I didn't make top eight, uh, as I'm sure you know by now. I, uh, I had a really good first draft deck. I drafted a, an excellent Salt High deck uh, with Silumgur, the Drifting Death, uh, Dead Drop, and a bunch of good, uh, bunch of good spells and creatures. Um, but unfortunately, I only went one and two with the deck. Uh, I, I won my first round, and then just sort of had some terrible draws in the second. You know, I stalled on two land in one game, and then got uh, Active Treason Collateral damaged in the next game, uh, which, you know, was, was lost number one in the draft. And then uh, I played against Ivan Flock in the final round of the draft, and he had an excellent Mardu deck that lined up really well against mine. He had a ton of removal spells and Wingmate Rock and just sort of took me down. So, uh... I managed to recover from that, though. You know, coming into the day, I was five and three, and then going one and two in the draft left me in the, at six and five, which is not very good. Um, but I managed to rally back and go four and one in the constructed rounds uh, to end at ten and six, which isn't awesome. It's not like a you know super exciting record, but it is good enough for top seventy-five uh, and the extra pro po or uh, extra pro points and extra money. So. That's pretty nice. You know, I get, uh, get $1,000 and uh, three extra pro points, which is, you know, those are sort of your, your, your bread and butter finishes. Yeah, that, that in the top 50, top 25, that's where you're, you know, you pick up, uh, you pick up a little bit of uh, little bit extra points, a little bit extra money. So, uh, but more excitingly than, than my own finish is the fact that both uh, Eric Froelich and Jacob Wilson from our, uh, our testing group uh, made top eight, which is pretty sweet. Um, Efro was playing the... Uh, Abzan, sort of more more traditional style of Abzan deck uh, that pretty much half the team played, and Jacob Wilson was playing uh, the deck that I played. Um, so it's pretty sweet to see two teammates uh, making the top eight. Uh, it's always it's always uh, pretty you know pretty nice to see decks that you work on do well, even if you personally don't do great in a tournament. I mean, you know, I can't complain. I made you know I made money at the Pro Tour. You know, it's a, it's, it's a good finish. My finish was, was was you know. If you told me that I would get top 75 coming in, I would have been like, eh, you know, not happy about it. But particularly given that at one point I was, you know, 6 and 5 or whatever, I'm certainly happy to have finished 10 and 6. Uh, and, you know, I really liked our deck. I don't like the modern format particularly much, but I do like the fact that, you know, a, a, an honest uh, an honest man's deck with honest creatures can uh, can cut through all the, uh, all the garbage uh, linear decks and, and, and make top 8. And, you know, I didn't do it, but Jacob did, and that's awesome. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, pretty happy with the result overall. You know, obviously would have loved to have done better. But that's Magic, you know. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But you know, even though Magic is a, you know, individual competition, ultimately, you know, you and your opponent are sitting there playing, the, you know, you do, you know, work with, work with uh, groups. You, you know, make friends. And seeing them do well, you know, not quite as great as doing well yourself, but, uh, but still really, uh, really satisfying and really rewarding. So uh, I'm really happy that we managed to put up a good result with uh, two team members in the top eight. It's pretty exciting. And uh, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. So this is probably going to be my last, uh, my last video log for the Pro Tour because I am not personally playing tomorrow, so I'm not really going to have much to say about the results there. But overall, you know, I was, I was happy with our testing process. You know, I was, uh, I was happy with the deck that we came to. I was happy with my preparation for draft. And, you know... I, I feel like if I'd gotten a little bit more fortunate that I might have been able to do very well in this tournament. And that's, that's you know, that's the thing about Magic, you know, about playing competitively, is that, you know, you could you could be super prepared. You could have the best possible deck, and things just don't go your way. You just you just kind of get unlucky, and that happens. Um, and I, I, I've said, you know, I've, I've said with uh, a number of people a number of times, I don't think I've ever, you know, sort of quoted this in uh, my video logs for the tournaments, but... One of the most important things, most important skills of pro Magic players is to get good at losing. Because you do it a lot. <laughs> you know, uh, they told me that, that this tournament I got my 400th Pro Tour win. Which, that's a lot of wins. I don't know how many losses I have, but uh, I hope it's not more than 400. <laughs> I don't think it is. I'm pretty certain it's not. I think I still have like a 60% you know, or so win rate. But, uh, but you know, when, you've, when you have 400 wins, if you have a 60% win rate, you still have a whole lot of losses. And, you know, you have to accept that that just happens sometimes. It's out of your control. It's not to say that, you know, that you can't... There, there aren't losses that you could have won. You know, that there aren't places where you could have played better or prepared better or whatever. Like Hawaii, for instance. Uh, I actually did video logs in Hawaii. I did, I did some logs uh, preparing for the Pro Tour, but I did so badly at that event uh, that I just didn't want to post them. It was just like, you know, it was both... 
pathetic and <laughs> how bad I did, but but also just like you know who who's interested in this you know because I I uh, had spent I didn't spend enough time preparing for that event you know I I had actually been on a cruise the weekend before uh, with Natalie yeah you know, she'd really wanted to go on this uh, groove cruise sort of like party cruise thing and it happened to be the weekend before the pro tour so it meant that I basically was testing for like three and a half days for the tournament. And that's not, that's not enough. You know, when there's, when the other top teams out there are testing for, you know, a week, a week and a half. Um, I, you know, I, I didn't even know all the cards in the draft format. I messed things up constantly. My deck wasn't great. So, you know, it's, it is what it is. And you have to recognize, you know, okay, well, how much of my effort am I putting into trying to, to do this thing? You know, cause I, I love magic and I love competition, but at the same time, you know, you know, how, how much time can you realistically spend working on preparing for magic events, given, you know, the, the, the likelihood of you getting sort of return on that, not just monetarily, but just, you know, I, I was talking to some, some other, you know, other pro players like Tom Martell and Alexander Hain earlier today, actually, it was just how exhausting it can be sometimes to, you know, go to these events and spend all this time preparing for these events. And then just things just don't go your way. And, you know, Obviously, there's some sort of first world problems in this, and I recognize that, that, you know, I'm, I'm here and I get to play at the Pro Tour, and there's tons of people out there who would love to be in my position, who, who just, you know, who aren't, who, who, who can't be for whatever reason, um, and, you know, at the same time, you know, we just have to be realistic in terms of, you know, okay, well, what am I, how am I allocating my time, you know, is it reasonable for, for me to be spending, you know, a week practicing for a Pro Tour when, you know, if I do, if I have a reasonable finish like I did this time, you know, I win a thousand dollars. When you know that, like, that's a lot of time spent. And you know, as it's particularly relevant as I get older, you know, and and I mean, I'm getting married later this year, and I imagine that as I have more sort of responsibilities, uh, and you know, not just not just uh, not just with my time, but you know, financially, you know, if I have kids and whatnot. Um, it's, you know, it becomes more sort of of a strain and, you know, I certainly, I certainly am impressed by those, uh, those players who, who managed to, uh, balance their, you know, family life with playing and, you know, shout out to all you, all you out there who, you know, really want to try and make it in the pro tour, but, uh, have been constrained by your responsibilities because, you know, I, I, I'm growing up, I'm getting to be one of the old folks and, uh, you know, it's rough out there, man. It's rough out there for us old folks. (laughs) Anyway, I'm sort of rambling at this point, but overall, you know, I had a I had a great uh, great time practicing and playing in this pro tour. Um, again, I'm not really a huge fan of modern. I do plan on writing about about like my thoughts in the format in general. I had long discussions with both other players as well as um, people in Wizards R and D about my sort of thoughts in the format. Um, I think it'd be great actually if modern just wasn't a pro tour format and you know it was just a Grand Prix and, and whatever PTQ style format, because I think that would just be a way better place for the format to be. Um, I think that when the sort of, uh, the spotlight of the Pro Tour is shined on a format that uh, you end up with, you know, having to do things like ban Birthing Pod, because, you know, I know that that's, ma- that's the sort of thing that's made a lot of people upset because they you know, spent a lot of time and, and money and energy, you know, building Birthing Pod decks because it was a deck they enjoyed, but these formats can't be, you continue to be interesting uh, if they're, they stagnate. And, and a card like Birthing Pod does exactly that. You know, it, it encourages, it both uh, draws power from every creature ever made and, and that ever will be made. You know, we saw with Siege Rhino that the deck can just be, you know, this, this great fair deck in addition to being a combo style deck. Um, but regardless, you know, I, I'll be writing about that more. And uh, yeah, overall, pretty good, pretty good weekend, pretty good week. And uh, I was debating whether I was going to go to Grand Prix Vancouver. Maybe I will now. Who knows? Anyway, I'll stop rambling. So thanks for watching. Um, I will be back, I guess, next Pro Tour with, uh, with more of this. So let me know what you think in the comments. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you then.